Hello everyone and welcome to Traffic Corner Tuesday. My name is Nancy Crow and I'm the Vice President of Marketing for SPAC Consulting and your host for today's session. Let's see. All right, before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone of a couple housekeeping details. Please mute your mics. Muting your mics uh, to minimize the background noise will help uh, allow everyone in the presentation to hear our presenter clearly. And also, join the conversation. Today's presentation is intended to be an interactive dialogue. And I would encourage you and all of the attendees to feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation. You don't need to wait till the end to ask a question. Our presenter today would be happy to answer your questions throughout the presentation. So just type your question into the chat area and we will address your message throughout the presentation. All right, and then I want to introduce today's presenter. Mike Spack is the president of Spack Consulting and he is the recognized industry leader of traffic studies. He is a graduate of the University of Minnesota, past president of North Central section of the Institute of Transportation Engineers and a fellow of the Institute of Transportation Engineers. Since 1996, Mike has led over a thousand traffic engineering projects. During the past two decades, Mike has founded four companies, including SPAC Consulting, and is the creative force and principal writer of the industry-leading blog, Mike on Traffic. He is an accomplished author with articles published in industry publications, as well as several industry manuals that are used by engineers around the world. So please welcome Mike Spack. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, I appreciate that intro. Uh, sometimes Brian Fisek with SPAC Consulting, our Vice President, joins me as well, but uh, he is out of the office today. So uh, Nancy touched on this a little bit. Uh, today we're coming to you from a bunch of different organizations and companies, but kind of the blank blanket is SPAC Enterprise mm -hmm. uh, with SPAC Consulting and SPAC Academy leading the way. So as a thank you for everyone in attendance, uh, we'll have details at the end of this on how to get uh, a free sample study. Today we'll be covering kind of our new traffic impact study format and uh, we'd be happy to send you a PDF of one of uh, the studies we've done in this new format, so stay tuned for that. So as I mentioned today, uh, we will be going, giving an overview of the new format. Uh, I'll go through a PDF case study, which we can email you later, and then also show you our template, our Microsoft Word template that we came up with and some of the other resources to tie things together. Coming up uh, in mid-February, we're going to be talking about crash analysis and going through some case studies there on Valentine's Day. Uh, so if you're looking for something romantic to do, join us on February 14th and uh, then on the 28th, uh, we're going to be talking about parking at large uh, mixed-use developments and a case study on how, how to right-size the parking uh, versus just uh, taking what the city code gives and often ends up with an excess of parking. So uh, starting out with our format, uh, kind of the evolution of, of where we began 20 years ago and uh, where we are now. Uh, when I started doing impact studies, um, pretty basic Word documents with graphics done in, uh, we actually used a mix of AutoCAD and Corel Draw. Uh, then uh, about a decade ago, ITE came out with a recommended uh, practice guide and it had, an out, uh, it had an outline in there and format and here at SPAC Consulting, we switched over to follow that more closely. Uh, then, uh, a couple years ago, with the software program from PTV, Vistro, Vistro, uh, that really streamlined how we do impact studies. Uh, and it's a tool for doing the forecasting capacity analysis all in one software program, but really the genius of the program, uh, for blog readers of mine, they know I've blogged about it since the beginning, it's, uh, it produces all of the graphics and tables you need um, and we changed our report format to basically put all of that material in the appendices and streamline the front Word document uh, around that. Today we're going to be going over kind of the big changes uh, that we've had uh, that we've been working on this winter and rolled out here at the beginning of the year uh, that is our next evolution. And uh, with that, I'm going to 
switch over uh, in a minute to a PDF case study uh, to show you the different pieces. But uh, a couple of the areas we really honed in on uh, were one, making sure we have a tight executive summary that city engineers, uh, city council members, uh, basically non-traffic engineers could read and understand. Um, switch more to you trying to use visuals uh, instead of text. So we're trying to move things into tables and graphics to make things easier, to, uh, especially the important information, have that jump out at you. Um, and you'll see once we get to our summary graphs around level of service, uh, one big change uh, that I made, and it's it's been something that's bothered me since the beginning of my career is when we use level of service grades at a side street stop sign intersection and, and sometimes show for a single vehicle in the peak hour, that car may be waiting there 90, 100 seconds, but we're showing it at level of service F, and then getting into a public hearing and trying to explain why level of service F is bad at an always stop, at a traffic signal, at a roundabout, but how level of service F is completely okay at a stop sign as long as we deem it so. Um, so we've worked to try to streamline how we communicate uh, acceptable versus unacceptable operations. Um, and then lastly, I'll flip through the appendix and show you some of the Vistro outputs. And we've come up with some boilerplate appendix material um, that explains some of our jargon and how level of service works to take that out of the body of the report uh, so those who are familiar with those concepts don't get bogged down uh, with those sections in, a, in the standard ITE process uh, format. Uh, we've moved that to the appendix, so it's there as a resource for people who need it. So with that, I'm going to switch over from uh, switch over from the PowerPoint and get into our case study. Um, for those who have been following along, we have a fancy new logo here that we rolled out at the end of the year for SPAC Consulting. Uh, pretty simple layout here for the cover page. Um, we wanted to just keep it clean. Uh, not too distracting. Uh, sign off here. Some states require a PE to sign off on traffic impact studies. Some don't. In Minnesota, actually, we do not have to sign as a PE, but uh, since we are PEs putting these studies together, we've decided <laughs> we're going to sign them. Uh, so then when I get into the executive summary, which I feel is very important, um, we have a, a clear kind of paragraph uh, about what is this study um, and why are we doing the study and then hone in on a couple of the key results. Um, again, this isn't a blow-by-blow -blow of every single thing in the study, but more of a summary of the big important takeaways. And then I firmly believe in having crystal clear recommendations. And uh, this is uh, something born out of a uh, presentation I saw early in my career uh, after the it was a follow-up basically that talked about the space shuttle explosion and it turned out the failure on that was a gasket and it was too cold and the engineers uh, deep down actually believed it was going to be a problem and when the upper management pushed them they were wishy-washy on if it would be a problem or not uh, they basically laid out the facts as they saw them, but let upper management interpret what those facts meant. Um, and of course, resulted in a tragedy. Uh, out of that uh, presentation I saw, they, they strongly argued that it's our responsibility as engineers to interpret our data and make clear recommendations. So we like to do that, to have the bullet points of what we believe should be done. Okay, then we roll on, pretty standard table of contents. You'll see that the front of the document is actually pretty short, uh, only 13 pages of the report. <laughs> but then down here, you'll notice uh, our document is actually about 130 pages. So get into an introduction, talk about the proposed development, purpose of the study, and the study objectives, just to lay out what we are doing. Uh, we have a language of traffic engineering guide that's included in the appendix 
uh, to help get up to speed with jargon. Um, we don't bog down the report with defining everything. Uh, along with the study objectives, we roll out what the study intersections are going to be. Uh, and then all of that is pretty normal stuff. Uh, this is where things, we started making tweaks. Uh, for under existing conditions, in the past we used to take Highway 22 and we would describe all of this in text and take a paragraph or two for each of the study corridors. Um, we decided to move to a table so people, if this is important to them, they can quickly come down and see the name the designation, if it's a state or a county road, along with uh, here in Minnesota, I think this is pretty unique in the country. We call a state, we have a designation for some state highways, our trunk highways, county state aid highways versus county roads, and that's based on cat, <laughs> gas tax designations, etc. But then speed limits, configuration, talk about transit a little bit, um, but then come down here who operates it. So trying to give a quick snapshot of what's going on in a table versus uh, bogged down text. Uh, and then we talk about the study intersections and traffic volumes and how we went out there and collected turning movement volumes and how that data is included in the appendix. Uh, you'll notice here we have moved to collecting two days worth of counts. Uh, sometimes we do 13 hours, uh, if we think it's going to be really light overnight, we're not going to do the 24-hour counts, but if we think there's some nighttime activity, we'll actually collect a full 48-hour turning movement count. Uh, that allows us to look at the peak hours, see if one day is an anomaly versus the other. Uh, assuming they are not, then we end up just averaging the two days peak hours together, uh, we feel is a more representative way of uh, showing normal conditions and then flag what the typical peak hours will be. Next section rolling in, we talk about forecasting, um, how we go about uh, doing our trip generation forecast. This is pretty basic stuff for any traffic engineer. Uh, trip generation when possible, which is actually recommended in the trip generation manual. We try to collect our own local data, and we do have a big spreadsheet uh, data set at tripgeneration.org that we share, but first and foremost, that is us collecting our own data so we can use those in our studies. Uh, we have not yet collected at specialty retail, so we utilized the ITE data on that. And then uh, some folks will put on a map the trip distribution percentages. Uh, we default to just describing the general direction the distributions come from. And then go through non-site traffic forecasting of bumping up with a growth factor, uh, our traffic volumes to get them to a future year without the development, and then we layer on the forecasted volumes to get the total traffic. And we describe all that, and then the resultant uh, turning movement count diagrams and all that math is shown in the appendix diagrams that are produced from Vistro software. So uh, next section, and here's where we're going to start getting into big changes, um, the analysis. Uh, we're still going with our study scenarios, our study hours. We're uh, doing the full level of service analysis, the grades. Uh, we're doing queuing. Uh, we're describing all that. We're putting all of those results in the appendix. But as we go on, here's the huge change. Uh, we take for the AM peak hour, the PM peak hour, signal, signal, we are showing the different scenarios. There's only uh, one signalized intersection uh, in this study, so we're showing the average delay uh, versus here, and then also calling out that our level of service DE boundary is up here. Um, and you can see there's only slight changes as we move through our different scenarios. Uh, in both the AM and the PM peak hour. Um, then, uh, roll through that, we would have similar charts if we have always stops or roundabouts. We don't in this case, uh, but we do have uh, a couple of, uh, we have four different side street stop sign controlled intersections. And after much debate internally, 
we decided we're still going to show all of the level of service calculations in the appendix, but we feel a much more measure, appropriate measure of effectiveness for when we need to do something at an intersection is based on queuing. That's what we've, in the, at least in the Midwest here, seem to do, and that's what we've defaulted to at SPAC Consulting for, uh, I think we go back a decade to really honing in on the queues. We just draw that line of, at five vehicles, uh, that represents unex unreasonable queuing, in our opinion, uh, that 95th percentile queue. I will say this is subjective. We have spent a tremendous amount of time trying to research are there any standards out there for what is a bad queue versus what is acceptable? We haven't been able to find any. Um, so we basically draw the line uh, between f five and 10 vehicles. But uh, for this study in this area, we've drawn the line at five vehicles in the 95th percentile queue. Uh, so that was the AM. Then we go ahead and show the PM and even longer queues. We're getting into 16 vehicles. Um, so that leads us into the mitigation discussion then um, of going through different scenarios. Uh, the traffic signals were okay. Uh, if you remember, we're well below uh, really operating in the level of service B range. Um, but just a couple of those intersections have queuing, so we go through that and end up uh, with a roundabout recommended at one of those intersections. Um, then from there, uh, we go into our conclusions recommendations. You'll remember from the front, the executive summary, we had a couple of bullet points under the conclusions. Here we actually lay out more of a description of everything going on in here. Um, and then roll into, based on those findings, here are our clear recommendations on how to mitigate that. So, uh, a quick 12-page <laughs> front report, uh, and then we get into a 100-plus page uh, appendix here for a pretty basic impact study with five, six intersections and one land use. Um, you'll see we have site plan, we have kind of a glossary of terms, we have our traffic counts, we have a detailed trip generation table, we have all of the level of service calculations, and those include all the turning movement diagrams for the different scenarios. Uh, and that's uh, kind of summary, and then we get into all of the diagrams. So just to quickly scroll through. Um, site plan, I'm not going to, it actually is big. We should have scrunched that down, but we'll scroll through that if somebody wanted to see the full site plan. Uh, this, then we get into uh, the language of traffic engineering, and hopefully everyone has signed up through the blog Mike on Traffic. Uh, if you sign up to get Mike on Traffic as a newsletter, you'll also be put on a list to get our research briefs, and we send out about one a month on different topics. Uh, and this language of traffic engineering uh, PDF is part of that series, so we thought we would just reuse that and put it into our appendix here. Um, it's got a bunch of the different terms and definitions. Uh, then we get into standard turning movement diagram uh, tables, which uh, we do under our Traffic Data Inc. company. Uh, we'll scroll through those. Uh, then another uh, cut sheet from, uh, this was our third research brief, uh, but goes through and describes the level of service in detail, what it means, how it's calculated. Um, bar chart here showing, ah, <laughs> unsignalized versus signalized, um, and then kind of what does this mean and what's acceptable and not. And then here we start getting into uh, the Vistro uh, printouts, and uh, we love these um, in that, so here's the AM existing, the three study intersections in the scenario gives the Breakdown, you'll notice two-way stop control, so it gives the level of service of the worst approach. So we have 48 seconds level of service E. But again, going back, we decided in the report to hone in on the queuing instead of uh, really highlighting that delay. Um, level of service calcs uh, from the HCM for each of the study intersections, uh, including the signal with its timing in there. And 
then from there we start to get into diagrams showing the traffic control around the study intersections, lane configurations. Uh, we have the base volume, so for that peak hour, the turning movement diagrams. Um, and since it's existing, if we scroll down, uh, we'll get into uh, showing then the forecast build-out volume. So that is the case study in a nutshell. So I'm going to close out of that, and in our last five to ten minutes here, uh, seeing we don't have any questions, I'm going to show you what we've done to make ourselves more efficient. It was a huge efficient, <laughs> excuse me, let's see, I let's see, Jay Luna, uh, it seems like the conclusions and recommendations in the executive summary and at the end of the document should be the same text. Uh, we, they are the same text, but we decide in the executive summary to abbreviate and remove some of the bullet points that we feel are more nuances. And in the executive summary, we only include the bullet points that we feel are that high level important for a city council member um, or a lay person to read. Um, but you could certainly choose to just copy paste from one to the other. Um, but we decided in the executive, executive summary, we want it to be a little more brief. Um, so to flip over to our Word document, a big change for us is making this template. And we've done this so an admin uh, on staff can populate about 40% of the document, actually much more than that, and uh, really let the engineers just work on the analysis, the mitigation, and the conclusions. Um, Let's see, another question. For your volume figures, are those produced directly by Vistro? Uh, yes, they are directly produced by Vistro, and uh, Chris says he typically does it in CAD MicroStation, and we used to do that. And yes, it has literally using Vistro and just accepting their default figures has resulted in us cutting our time about in half to produce an impact study because it does take a lot of time and also is a place to introduce typos and that type of errors uh, getting numbers transposed. So back to the Word document, uh, one thing we've done is the admin, we give her our proposal, uh, Kathy, and it has the name of the development in it, it has our study intersections, it has uh, where the project is located, so it has a lot of the scoping details and she takes those and then just does a find replace, puts in the brackets, development, and then we'll type in find that and replace all with uh, Miller land development uh, and then put in the city state. What that ends up doing is then uh, throughout it will change development, city, state, up there, it'll change it up here, it will change it throughout the whole document, so she only has to do it once. Um, and that was a big step forward for us. Um, also put in things like state, um, we flagged items in uh, the parentheses, or we make X's and Y's, where she needs to go through, these are highlights telling her these are things to change and to input to the new format. Um, this is all for the engineer to fill in, gets to the table, so that's all set up. You can see this is just a lot of boilerplate, uh, purpose of the study, study objectives, all of this generally stays the same. The road corridors, if we're going to do daily volume analyses, the intersections, this all populates. Uh, she'll put in road one and then that will ripple effect through the whole study. Um, and also then the engineer or Kathy, depending on who has time, um, we've taught her how to gather some of this information as well and highlight where she's unsure so the engineer can go back and check. Um, so you'll notice from the case study, it's all the same, but we've very much made it a template so there's a lot of find replace and then uh, just places placeholders for the text to be updated. Uh, and when we get to the bar charts along here, we have uh, spreadsheets set up and they are tied to the Word document. 
so that we can update and do the same find replace throughout this document and then input the delay numbers from the Vistro report. So this is the engineer does this and is very looks very close at this. But then it populates the charts and they automatically update in the Word document. So we are trying to make this very cookbook so the engineers can focus on the engineering. Um, but we're also trying to reduce the number of times we do a data entry. Uh, and then the last benefit is make it so we can easily change. Uh, we've all had the studies that come back and say, well, can you add this intersection or can you change the size of the development changed by a few percent, but we need to update the trip generation, which then updates all of the capacity analysis and everything and has this huge ripple effect. But with this setup, we can do those ki kinds of revisions very fast. Um, so again, scroll through the documents and you'll see boilerplate. Uh, we have all the charts called out, so it's all standard. Um, of course, we can update the document. Uh, if, for instance, we weren't doing an AM peak hour, uh, maybe we're doing a Saturday analysis at a shopping center instead. We could change that out. Um, and then we have boilerplate with sections if we are going to add in a kind of a site plan review, multimodal review. Here are all the things the engineer should be thinking about and populating. And then back to the conclusions, recommendations, our standard appendix filled out. So with that, uh, please, if anyone has questions, uh, go ahead and put them in now. We uh, only have a couple minutes left, so we'll fly through. Uh, I went through the case study, went through the template here. Thank you very much, uh, Jay, Luna, and Chris for your questions. I'm not seeing any others, so we'll just keep moving. Uh, we promised at the beginning, you can either text us here at 44222. Uh, and text the word traffic corner and I believe whatever you, your data rates are will apply but I think everyone has free texting on their smartphone now uh, or feel free to email Nancy uh, and Crow with an E at SPACconsulting.com and she will uh, either way uh, we will get you the PDF of the case study the live traffic study that we went through so you can see that and have that as a reference for you um, uh, Jeff asked, did I say that uh, attendees can get the template? And no, <laughs> I did not say that. Over at SPAC Academy, we have a lot of templates and training materials, and there we will be selling the template. Um, it did take us quite a while to put that together, uh, so it will be for sale. And uh, please sign up for, uh, we're going to be selling that, uh, but we will be giving a discount code. Uh, for those who get the case study. So if you are interested in that, uh, I think we'll be giving 50% off on that. Um, so you can get the Word document. And when you get the Word document template and you buy it, it is yours to freely use and modify. So uh, last here, uh, 12.58, two minutes left. Feel free if anyone else has any other questions to populate them. Otherwise, uh, let you know in a couple weeks. Uh, we are trying to hone in on a recurring event of doing this the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month. We're going to do the traffic corners. Our next one happens to be on Valentine's Day, February 14th, and we're going to be covering crash analysis, uh, running through some case studies, and uh, we had a good corridor where we did intersection analysis as well as look at the corridor as a whole. So we'll go through some of the tools we use for doing that and uh, what the results are. So with that, thank you everyone. Feel free uh, back here at mspac at spacconsulting.com. Uh, if you have any questions for me offline, feel free to email me. I uh, always love feedback. And if you have any other ideas, uh, ideas for other traffic corner topics, uh, we are always here to help. Thanks everyone. Talk to you later.